Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope that all of you are doing well, and I hope that all of you are doing great. A very warm welcome from Adreka. Let me introduce myself. My name is Deepak. I have 15 plus years of experience uh, in the same field. I have designed, developed, implemented solution for various organizations. In addition to that, I have certain patents on my name. And let's get started ethical hacking using Kali Linux. So this is the agenda for today. That's something we are going to talk about. We will learn today the basics of hacking. At the same time, we will learn about what exactly is ethical hacking, difference between ethical and unethical hacking. In addition to that, we will talk about what is a security threat and uh, what is Kali Linux and ethical hacker skills. So that all we are going to learn today. Okay, so let's get started. Let's start with the very first thing, the basis of hacking. So what exactly is hacking? So basically the act of hacking is defined as the process of finding a set of vulnerabilities in a target system and systematically exploiting it. That's basically is your hacking like these are the hackers who are trying to exploit your system out. Now that was a basic about ha hacking, but what exactly is ethical hacking? Let's just understand about it. Ethical hacking uh, as a discipline uh, itself uh, basically means from hacking from someone's consent. So basically legal activity. So since the ethical hacker is going to take the permission to hack to your system. So that's why it is legally make sure that there is no malicious intent. This is just to provide the security. So in other words, the people who are going to perform uh, hacking uh, without your consent, like for example, they found a vulnerability like a SQL injection or something. They are able to find a vulnerability and they are able to access your system out. Then in that case, it's going to be unethical hacking where they are going to hack your system for their own benefit. Ethical hacking wherein is a way where the hacking is going to be done with your consent, with your permission to find out the loopholes, the flaws, the vulnerabilities so that it can be fixed by uh, your company at the earlier stage rather than an ethical hacker can take advantage of it. That's why it is legal and there is no malicious intent, intent of that. Now coming to the goals of ethical hacking, there are various goals. If we talk about the top three, the first goal is that to protect the privacy of the organization being hacked so that whatever the loopholes or any kind of uh, vulnerabilities which are going to be, uh, you know, ethical hacker is going to find is not going to publicize, is going to share with you internally. Next is that uh, transparently report. So basically where in this case you are going to identify all the weaknesses in the computer system of the organization and the IT teams, the security team, all the teams are going to work together and you are going to close the door of vulnerabilities. Like maybe you are using uh, the older version of application which has a vulnerability. So that needs to be fixed by the application team. So all those kind of things are going to be fixed by them. Last one basically is your inform hardware and software vendors of the identified weakness, which basically says that you are using some software of uh, any of the organization, like you are using some software of let's say ABC organization and you are able to see that in that organization there is a vulnerability now in that case so in that organization whatever the vulnerabilities that you're able to see or whatever you're able to find that has to fix by that vendor only because you will not be able to fix those vulnerabilities out because that's something their product they have their source code they have to basically make some kind of amendments and all so that something is going to be fixed by them so that basically are is a major I would say the goal of ethical hacking and these are the most important three major goals of ethical hacking now moving on why ethical hacking like we got what exactly hacking means uh, we got an understanding what are the goals of hacking that we are going to have but like why ethical hacking the primary two things the first thing is that your information is valuable i mean for every, any company whether it's a startup it's a big one uh, the data is a crude oil specifically on the digital world so information is valuable you have to basically make sure that your information is protected and uh, you want to close the door of the vulnerabilities uh, if any vulnerability is going to be there before it's going to be uh, you know before your uh, uh, you know like ethical hacker is uh, not able to find those vulnerability out then unethical hacker will be able to find those vulnerabilities and he's going to take advantage of that vulnerability and he can compromise your system out so the first is your information is valuable second is getting lag which can lead to a serious business loss so wherein what can happen is if your organization, your organization basically, if there is a vulnerability uh, which is going to be uh, exploited by the hacker, then in that case it's going to spoil name and fame of your organization, wherein the entire share, shares value, where uh, entire market value of your uh, company may go down, which can become a big issue for you. So these are the primary two reasons that basically, uh, you know, depicts that why ethical hacking is very important. Now talking about a structured learning at Eureka. So if you are highly interested to take the course from us, and uh, you want to see how the training uh, path is going to look like. So let me just give you a little bit overview of it. 
in the very first class we basically start with introduction to cyber security like what exactly cyber security uh, what is ethical hacking its core components its phases each and everything that we cover with the practical hands-on after that in the second class we are going to basically cover about what is cryptography what cryptography means basically cryptography is an art and science of converting your readable data into unreadable data we are going to talk about the different types of cryptography the symmetric cryptography asymmetric cryptography each and everything we are going to cover with the practical hands-on in the third class we are going to basically cover about uh, computer networks and security what that means its components the practical hands-on in the fourth class we will cover about what is application and the web security what it means the practical hands-on in the fifth class we will learn about identity access management its components the practical hands-on sixth class we will learn about vulnerability analysis and the system hacking with the practical hands-on in the seventh class we will learn about sniffing and sql injection with the practical hands-on and in the eighth class we will learn about dos and session hijacking with the practical hands-on this is entire career path you're going to have the core structure in the uh, in the Eureka. okay now moving on uh, what is the security threat so what we have learned till now is what is ethical hacking why it is required or difference between ethical and unethical an hacking what exactly hacking means the goals of it why we need it with the structured learning like how the learning path is going to look like now what is a security threat and its different types so security threat uh, basically you can say it's any risk that can potentially harm a computer system that has the ability to destroy your computer system to destroy your application to impact your working of your application so that's a threat basically uh, which any kind of risk any kind of vulnerability which can potentially harm your system or application or a component now it is divided into two parts the physical and the non-physical threat if you talk about physical threat physical threat can be like internal within your data center external through external parties like sometimes we are hosting a data in a third party service center and the physical threat can be due to humans now coming to the non-physical threat non-physical threats are like your malware, your worms virus trojans spyware ransomware lots more now these are the two different type of threats that we are going to have now talking about the preventive measures again there are so many but if i talk about the top four measures the first measure you should be uh, have your organization must have logical security measures in place so along with uh, physical measures you are going to have cameras and everything you should have a logical measures logical measures like your network should be bifurcated you, you are not performing testing and uh, development in the same uh, network segment you should have your testing network into a different you know network zone and with a different gateway with different ip it's likewise your production should be in a different network segment so that if any kind of malware is going to come in your staging it should not come in the production Next one basically that you have is the organization must have some sort of cognitive uh, cybersecurity measures installed. Some kind of tools should be installed. Same sort of tools for monitoring and reporting so that you can be notified if someone is trying to make some malicious attempt to your organization. The third basically is the authentication method which is going to be used should be multi-factor authentication. Like you should have, you should not only have single factor authentication, you should have multi-factor authentication like username, passwords, along with username, password, you should have basically let's say a biometric uh, installed if not biometric you should basically have some smart cards so that you can be notified about it the next one that we have is you should have ids ips systems installed in your organization which is intrusion detection and intrusion prevention now coming about kali linux we say that kali linux is required uh, it basically helps you but what exactly is kali linux let's talk about it so Kali Linux is basically a Debian based Linux distribution orientation testing and security auditing system. Basically Kali contains several hundred tools which are available by default in the case of Kali for certain tasks like orientation testing, security research, computer forensic, reverse engineering. Uh, for various tasks you're going to have the tools installed and you don't have to worry about installing the, the tools. It's already uh, present in your uh, operating system. You just have to pick up the tool automatically. It's going to run. That's one of the biggest advantage. Now, talking about like why we should use Kali Linux first, as free as it can get, which means that Kali Linux have been and will always going to be free to use. So there is no need to pay for license and everything. Like for other operating system, we have to purchase a license key and all, right? In this case, there is not requirement. Next is more tools that you could think of. So in this uh, Kali Linux, like I said, you have a uh, hundred of tools. In total, you have 600 different penetration testing and security analytic tool and without uh, researching for the tools without searching that how to download wasting your time on that these tools are available by default and ready to use third is the open source 
So being a member of a Linux family, uh, it follows the widely appreciated open source model. So the development tree is publicly viewable on Git and all the code is available for your tweaking purpose. You can make the modification as per your requirement. Next is a multi language support. So Kali includes true multilingual support which allows more users to operate in their native language and locate the tools that they need for their job. Last is completely customizable. So their de uh, developers at offensive security understand that not everyone will agree with the design model. So they have made it easy as possible for more adventurous users to customize Kali Linux for their own stuff. Now if you talk about this is a requirement for Kali if you want to install Kali the hardware requirement is minimum of 20 GB of space you, you should have on your system. And if you talk about a RAM minimum is 1 GB but recommended is 2 GB or more and you can install on any of the virtual softwares. Now tools with Kali Linux you get a lot of tools. These are the common tools like Wireshark, Nessus, Nmap, Aircorrect, NG but there are various tools which are being available for your uh, ethical hacking. Let me just show you a small um, example. So uh, let's say you want to use Kali Linux. It's not mandatory that you have to install, uh, you know, in the new operating system on your uh, system. You have to format the current one and install the new one. Basically, uh, what you can do is you can install the virtual softwares like VirtualBox or VMware. Even you can use Hyper-V as well, and you can install the Kali Linux on that. Let me share with you. Like in my case, I'm using VirtualBox software. So in VirtualBox, what I have done is I have installed Kali Linux operating system. So without rebooting my system, because you can have a dual boot, like uh, you can have one operating system at a time in dual boot, but in this case, you can simultaneously run two operating system at the same time. But you should have that hardware on your on your side. Now in this case, let's say I want to use uh, you know Kali Linux. I just simply open it out. Will take a moment to come. As you were able to see, I have multiple accounts configured. I'm logged in with one account right now. Now, in this case, uh, as you can see, this is basically uh, the Kali Linux I have. Now, for example, I want to perform information gathering. I have all these bunch of tools available. I want to perform vulnerability analysis. I have all these tools. Like I want to perform password attack. Likewise, I basically have a bunch of tools. Plus you can write your own custom code as well, like which I have written as well. I can show you, let's say I want to perform encryption and decryption. I have written my own code. Uh, let me just open a terminal right now. Now basically I have written a code uh, in Python with symmetric algorithm. What symmetric is symmetric is symmetric basically uses one key for encryption and another key for decryption. So basically I have written this code where in this case let's say I want to encrypt the data and okay let's do one thing here. Let's just uh, clear this off for a moment. Let's say I want to encrypt the data. My data is my account number which is something like this and this is my data. And uh, let's say the password that I, I want to use for encryption is let's say it's my name Deepak. Now what exactly it has done is uh, it has encrypted the data out and uh, this is ciphertext. Now what I can do is I can pass this ciphertext to the receiver over the internet and uh, where what will happen is over the internet people will see this message. They will not be able to understand it and I can use my own code right now to decrypt it. So basically the ciphertext that I have provided I have to provide the same key and using that I will be able to get the same plain text message. So that basically is available that gives you the entire flexibility. We have all that kind of flexibility in the case of Kali Linux. You can pick up all the kind of tools and you will have that entire flexibility that you can decide that which tool you want to use for which purpose. Like I want to scan all the system all the networks. You will be able to scan all the systems all the network out wherein you will be able to see that what all different systems you have in your domain. What is your operating system each and everything you will be able to fetch it out using the different tools that we have in uh, Kali. Again, uh, this is a very big discussion. Basically, if you're going to enroll for the course, we pick up the tools and we try to dive in more detail. We talk about all each and every tools and we take this uh, th uh, thing in detail as well in the course. We can wrap up the session for today.
I hope that you have really enjoyed the today's session, and uh, it's an immense pleasure to meet all of you guys. Thank you for your time, guys.